Hello and welcome once again to the No Recoil Samurai Showdown podcast. My name is Scrub Saibot. I'm a TO and player in the community, and I'm joined here by my friend Inazuma. Hey, everybody, how's it going? So, for those who are uninitiated, No Recoil is a uh, every so often podcast about news and events in the Samurai Showdown community. And today we have a very special episode. It's our first ever interview. We are joined here by the wonderful Kelly Ann, who is a TO and player in the community. Say hi, Kelly. Hi, everyone. We are here today to ask Kelly a few questions about the upcoming Samurai Showdown tournament at Vortex Gallery Online 2023, a special event this Saturday. So Kelly's going to talk about that event, her time in the community, um, and whatever else kind of floats our boat this week. So, our first question is, uh, how are you doing today, Kelly? I'm very well. How are you? Just, uh, just milling about and such. It's a holiday in Canada, so sure. Oh, yeah, I've it's been taking it. Too. Oh, that's family day today. This mission day was a long weekend. And I was like, what? What long weekend? No, family day. It's one of those new, new holidays I'm still not used to. Okay, we have a holiday today too, so I went to get the mail and there was no mail. What, what is it? What is it for you guys? Um, President's Day? President's Day, interesting. Yes. You just yeah. celebrate like the, the president? Like, what is the detail about that? I don't know. Certain people uh, that have special jobs, like government jobs, get the day off. Most people. Oh, oh it's, a, it's a government holiday. I see, I see. Yeah, and the family definitely just wanted to give everybody a chance to go out more. Just uh, spend time with uh, more than loved ones. Nice. So just everyone gets a break. Yeah, my coworker had to remind me that there was a holiday, so I'm pretty grateful about that. And of course, I made a big list of chores to get done, and I didn't do them. And I'm on the cycle of, cycle of to-do list things that keeps repeating. So. So, VG on 23 is this uh, coming weekend. You must be very excited, Kelly. I am. This has actually been a work in progress since October, which is the longest time I've ever planned a tournament. So, I am excited for it and ready for it. October? So, did you reach out to uh, VG first, or did they... Yes. Did, how did that start out? Yeah, so... So, I had worked with VG... Um, Vortex Gallery for Evo and mm -hmm. uh, I was already in their discord and they had already mentioned that they would be doing something like this and they said if you're interested in doing it stay in the discord so I stayed and they asked um, basically the people who, were who had worked for them in the past if they had any games that they wanted to run for the BG on 23 and I was like of course this is what I wanted online sam show so um so i immediately yeah put my application in pronto and i think uh, you, you guys ran with uh vg23 uh well for g at uh, the next gallery for evo and uh i guess they simply know you from from that everything was rather really smooth going from there was there any um i mean it's not the first time they've seen sam show that you they already dealt with sam show at at evo so was it was it really smooth? Just transitioning from the application process, or did, was there any surprises along the way? I'm sure there was surprises, but um, all I can remember is the outcome, and it was amazing. Um, mm -hmm. So my husband and I, we 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 do a lot for Sam's show, and he's typically known as the streamer and the you know the lobby host, the one who you know runs the Samurai Showdown lobbies for Xbox and. Uh, He's been streaming it since the game came out in 2019. So um, when we did the Vortex Gallery tournament, uh, Scrub Saibot was the tournament organizer. And he was kind enough to let uh, me and Zal on the team, I guess. I, I guess I'll call mm -hmm. it a team um, of the, the Vortex Gallery. So that's how we how we uh, started. And that that whole that whole experience was amazing i it i had never been to an offline tournament at that point in my life and evo was my first wow 
Yeah, so it was um, definitely something. We, we drove out there with a huge car filled with electronics, monitors, oh, yeah. Xboxes, Playstations, computers, uh, you, you name it. If it was technology, we had it. And we had to bring a whole wagon to the hotel room and to the venue. So it was um, that part of it I wouldn't... I didn't really enjoy, you know, lugging all that stuff. But other than that, it was great. I mean, roll pack was announced during Evo while my husband's uh, Thrusty Zoll was streaming. And I happened to be recording and streaming at the same time as because I was trying to get crowd shots and I had my phone going streaming and somebody said rollback was announced. Um, so it was amazing. It w I caught it all on video and I think that that was huge. Like that was just huge. Like honestly, like everybody thought I was joking and it was, it was really cool because you know, it, I think it brought the community together because everybody kind of, they were all surprised, but just so excited. It was great. Definitely. And, I remember being at home and, and, and yeah, I, I remember being at home watching Eva and when they announced it, I, I yelled, it was late too. I was like, no way, there's no way they just are not there because what my husband may it was, a, it was a wish, right? It was a hope, right? That, that nobody really expected. But we think, oh, you know, it's a game probably gave up on this game. There's no way they're going to just add way back to it. And we were all begging for it. And, you know, SNK actually listened. And and here we are. We already went through that in. Yeah, and I, I remember when uh, I was at home watching Evo live. And then uh, they said there's a special announcement. And then I... I had my, I had a feeling it was going to be rolled back, but I wasn't sure because you know nobody could have predicted it, right? It's like we all thought SNK had given up on this game, and you know, like that was it. And you know, we we asked for rollback for so long, and you know, they, it just wasn't something that that we were told we were absolutely sure what's going to be coming. And then when that, when I saw the the uh, promo saying rollback in development. I was shouting. I was jumping out from my chair, and like, I'm so glad they listened because, and you can, you can see even with the beta test, right? We had 500 players, concurrent players, just opting into the beta. And this game, people want to play this game, and you know, rollback netcode is definitely the thing that's going to bring everybody together. You know, we had a you know a little rocky beta one, but I'm waiting for that beta two. And when it's fully implemented, I think we can get a real community going on again. I think, I mean, I agree with you 100%. The community loves, the, the the Samurai Showdown players that love this game, they love this game. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that the players want this game. They, I feel like they would drop anything to play this game again. And, I mean, a lot of them, I think, you know, yeah, had, had, not expected it and uh me being on the xbox i didn't really um i never really you know expected rollback but i don't really feel like it needs rollback all that much but um i do know that the other platforms uh definitely needed it so i was i was so excited for everybody it was it was a great feeling just to to experience that with everybody at evo it, it was perfect. I think that they announced it at the perfect time. And for us to have been running a, sh a Sam Show tournament, it was like, it, it just couldn't have happened any better. And you talk about the, you know, the Sam Show community being a very, very uh, dedicated community. Uh, like people would, I see people just grind this game, lap this game, discuss this game constantly. Um, and but and you have your own, uh, you're part of the Xbox Fighters scene, which is just not limited to Sam Show. Can you tell us more about uh, this this Xbox scene that you have grown uh, with Thrust, Thrusty? It's actually Xbox Fighters was um, started by Lemmy Hawkins, and um, he was running Samurai Showdown tournaments on the Xbox One. 
at the same time that my husband Thrusty's or Thrust Johnson on the Xbox, but Thrusty's all on Twitch, was running his Samurai Showdown tournaments. So they kind of at at first were kind of clashing because they were both running tournaments. So not clashing, but they were kind of running them like, hey, when are you going to do yours? Hey, when are you going to do, do yours? So that they didn't go on top of each other. And then, um, and then, eventually, I um, I found out I, I hadn't been on a Discord in my life, and that was the first Discord I ever joined, and it wasn't it was amazing. Like I I just people are really they're just so I, I, it was a it's a great experience in there because it's it's very friendly, um, and they're very great with the the modding, so um, it's it's pretty good. Uh, they do all the fighting games for Xbox um, that are popular, I guess. Um, I myself, the only fighting game that I actually do play is Samurai Showdown. So uh, I, I'm more involved with the community and in the social aspect, and I kind of know everybody in there. But I don't like play Melty Blood or or Tekken or I mean, I've tried King of Fighters 15, but. Um, Really, I just play Sam Show, so that's my. Sounds name. like me. This is <laughs> this is all I play. This, this, you know, this is actually also my my first fighting game. I I, I used to be uh, more of a uh, PC uh, RTS gamer, playing StarCraft for for ten years at that point, I think, and then you know, nearly ten years. And then I I got, I got you know I was like I, can, I think I was trying some try something new, and then I heard about this new Sam Show. It's it was marketed as no combos, right? Easy, easy to pick up. So I was like, okay, why not? Let me just give this a shot. And here we are, three years later, <laughs> still playing this wow. the same old Sam show, and it's become my favorite fighting game. Yeah, I can tell. Um, yeah, so it's definitely my favorite fighting game. It's definitely my husband's favorite fighting game. He was the one who, um, I think, about a year after we were married, he said to me. So, I'm very excited about something. He said, My favorite fighting game growing up was a game called Samurai Showdown. He said, I just found out that they're actually making a new version of it. And he said, this is what he said to me. He said, there's no way that I'm going to let this game, like, not do good. He said, and when the game came out, he was playing on Xbox. And from day one... He was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to stream the game. And I'm going to hold lobbies every Friday. And then I'm going to hold wow. tournaments. And he said, that way, every time that I stream, people, I will bring people into my lobby. So that the game, I will always have people to play with. He said, the one thing that I want is I want people to play this game. I want to always have people playing this game. And he definitely, I mean, he definitely did that. And uh, he, I would say so too. He definitely succeeded. He become he's become the the core, I would say, uh, uh, for Sam at least on the Xbox uh, platform, right? I think everyone sort of get gathers together to join that Friday session. Yes, yes, they have. And and honestly, we had a huge hiccup when this new version or the 120 frames per second version of Sam show was released on the new Xbox console called the Xbox series. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but the versions are not uh, cross compatible or cross cross. They're not cross play. So mm. basically, I don't know if you guys remember this, but um, when the Xbox series first came out, they were very hard to get. And my husband was lucky enough to get one console. And he expected to get the console and we were still gonna play, still gonna hold our lobbies. And he turned on the game and I tried to join and it says, um, cross generation not supported. Oh, cross generation matching is not supported. Oh, and no. if I remember correctly, I don't think SNK made much of an effort to like, Make that clear, because a lot I know a lot of like the big selling point is that uh, if you buy like an Xbox One game, it just carries over upgrades or whatever, and it's kind of the same way with PS Five. But 
I, I know cross compatibility, not not even just like Xbox One to Xbox Series, but Epic Game Store to Steam, kind of a, a problem with the community. Okay. And I recall people in the uh, the main Sam Show Discord, people are on the Xbox asking for games, and one person will be like, "Oh, I'm on Xbox One," and the other say, "Oh, I'm also on my Xbox," and then they say, "Okay, so let's make a room and let's play." And it turns out it doesn't work, and they're like, "What's going on?" And then we had to break the unfortunate news that if you're on the Series X, you cannot play with the Xbox One version. And there were literally people who have friends who had, you know, one person had was fortunate enough to have the uh, Series X console, and they were excited, and they both got the game when they wanted to play together. And turns out they can't. And it's really unfortunate because I think that definitely divided the the xbox community which is it, it's i mean it was already small and now it's getting even smaller right it was uh it was pretty devastating actually to the to the an initial um and it, when it initially came out it was pretty devastating it literally w went from everybody like me was still playing on the xbox one and and my husband and one uh one player scarlet uh scarlet spider he also had an Xbox series. So they literally started Casual Fight Friday back up with two people. And we still held oh. Casual Fight Friday on the Xbox One. So then that's how Weapon Flip Wednesday started. So Weapon Flip Wednesday was now kind of the series um, lobby. And it was <laughs> for months. I want to say it was for months. It was only two people playing. And it kept building and building and building and building. And and obviously, the Xbox One lobbies kept getting smaller and smaller. So, you know, with one growing, the other one had to get smaller because a lot of the people were getting the Xbox series. Um, we were actually really telling them, you know, this game, the netcode, it's amazing. Like, I I couldn't believe it when I first played it. My friends that I play with now on the Xbox series, I kept telling them, you guys have to feel what this feels like. I said, I'm not joking. They were like, it can't be that much better. I'm like, it is that much better. So it was, um, we, it was a little bit of a struggle, but um, eventually with, you know, the consoles becoming more widely available and uh, people and people getting them, it just grew. And then we were able to finally hold tournaments. And then Lunar Bout happened. And Sorrow, one of our Xbox uh, fighters, um, Sorrow actually has been doing our tournaments, uh, Thrusty's tournaments, since 2019 when the game came out. He did, I think, the first tournament that he ever held. So he's, uh, he's one of the OGs. And, and uh, he actually started, so he started playing the game on Xbox first? Yep. Yeah, on Xbox One. Hmm. So so that's just curious because he also has a uh, PlayStation 4 account for that game, which means at some point later on, he popped onto PlayStation to see what challenges they are okay, over there. Okay, so right? a little thing, a little insight. So Xbox Fighters, don't let that name fool you. Um, definitely Sorrow, definitely my husband, definitely... I would say 85% of the Xbox Fighters community all have a PlayStation and a PC. Interesting. And uh, so, so uh, Sorrow has a PlayStation 4, a PlayStation 5. He has a um, Xbox Series X, an Xbox One, an Xbox 360. Uh, he's pretty much got them all. And uh, which just like us um we also we we have sam show on everything so mm -hmm. i've heard we have it on it switch just, yeah. we have it on yeah PC. we have it on uh he even has like a copy of it that he's never even opened before because it's like a special collector's like oh. um box or something <laughs> um and yeah so we have a playstation 4 we have we used to have a playstation 3 but somebody kind of was supposed to fix it and give it back to us and they never did um we have a, a playstation 5 we have two game three three gaming pcs 
Uh, we actually used to play World of Warcraft and Guild Wars. We used to level up characters. Um, this was back in 2008. Um, but I, uh, I actually prefer consoles. I, I like being able to just press my button, turn it on, press a button on my controller, and my game is on. The, the computer, when I tried to play the, uh, the rollback beta, I just feel like there's a little more of a hassle to get it started. So, and, and it really isn't a hassle. It just, for me, is just not, not what I'm used to. It's a habit thing. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't feel you on that. I've, I've been playing on a Steam version of Sam Show more recently, but I used to feel the same way. I was like, ah, I don't, I really don't want to have to boot up my computer. Because the thing is, I play it like this is super scuffed, but I have my, my laptop is a MacBook. So I had to boot camp Windows on turn on steam just to play sam show and then if i'm not playing sam show i'm, I'm booting back into my my uh mac os right so be be previously before you know before the the draw onto the steam version for the beta i was just like you know i i just want to just turn on my ps4 and just start playing but now that after the the beta is so up everyone is on on the steam uh, I, yeah. I was checking ps4 yesterday and it's like, there's nobody there and even in the discord you no, know, there's we actually got a ton of new players who got the game just for the beta and now yep. they're sticking around to continue playing this game even in delay and they're they're fine with that yep yep yeah i mean the thing is is that they've been waiting for so long for rollback and that sale that they had 75 percent oh, off yeah it was like the best thing they could have done obviously so yeah um so anybody who was waiting for sam show is would definitely be like, oh, I'm going to buy that. And they knew that. So, and, and, and it worked. So there's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot and, of players. Yeah. And my friend, um, you know, I have some friends like to name drop, drop, uh, Pulse. He said, he's not getting the game on a third time. He says, you know what? I've gotten, a, I've gotten this game on EGS. Yeah. I've gotten it on PlayStation. I mean, it's like, I, I, say, I love this game, but there's no way they're going to get me to get this game for a third time. Yep. And then we're like, oh, you know what? That, you know what? That's understandable. But then you see the the, the massive sale for twelve bucks. You can get Samsung with all the DLCs. He's saying this is too this is too good of a deal to pass on for twelve bucks. <laughs> all right, I'll get that game for a third time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like so... as hard. Sorry, as hardcore players, right? You know, we're willing to like buy so many copies, but it's important to understand other people are not necessarily willing to make the jump like that, right? So, Mm -hmm. I think the sale is very helpful to just getting foots in the door and then our feet in the door and then we can just throw and expand outside of that. Yeah, um, Zal and I actually have also tried to get SNK to put it on Game Pass. Um, that would be amazing if they listened to us. Um, but they have listened to me in the past, so let's uh, keep our fingers crossed. What did you ask for in the past? I'm curious. Um, I've asked for, um, well, just like fixes and stuff and lobby things and, and, uh, they offered a merchandise prize to our winner for the Vortex Gallery tournament. Mm -hmm. Oh my, that's pretty exciting. Are you gonna, is that like a special secret or are you gonna reveal what that is? Uh... To be honest, I would love to re reveal what it is, and they said they sent it to me in the mail, but I have not received it yet, so I don't even know what it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm curious now. I, 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 me. It could be worth two thousand dollars, or it could be worth twenty dollars. Yeah. Or two million. Just kidding. <laughs> like a certain other tournament. I remember back in, uh, you know, two thousand, yeah, two thousand nineteen. 20 uh, my local startup top tiers we had a, a circuit going on where every week we had a tournament and then depending on how you place you get points and then at the end of the circuit uh the top four were invited to a a nicer uh what, what would you call it a nicer location i guess to to stream the top the the, the top four in a i think it was a, i believe it was a round robin to see who win the ultimate prize but SNK did su uh, supply uh, rewards, uh, special pr uh, prizes for for that event, and it, it was in the form of uh, figurines, T-shirts, posters, and I believe I, 
I believe a soundtrack was also along along the prizes. So I'm really curious. So like when you do get the get the package from SNK, I'm, I'm really curious what you, what they supplied you with. Yeah, I am very curious. I, I you know, we've been doing these tournaments for a long time, and they've been supporting. Um, so it was pretty exciting for us to get that email when they were like, we, we really want to support your tournaments with merchandise. And it was pretty exciting for us to hear that. I believe the next, like, um, after VG23, there's Combo Breakers, the next big Sam Show oriented, like, Sam Show featured uh, tournament, right? I think so. Well, I'm Winter... pretty sure nothing's coming until Combo Breaker. That'll be bigger than Combo Break. So, other well, other than the these uh, the SNK booth tournament at Japan Evo, but for here, yeah, yeah. As and... far as far as North America goes, right? Right. And that's run is com Are you part of that uh, combo organization of Combo Breaker? No, I'm not. Part no, of it. okay, okay, okay. So, because I I wanted to know is like, after VG twenty three, is there any plans in the future? Like, is there anything after that, or are you just focusing on VG twenty three right now? Oh, for offline or for online or for both? For Sam show and anything Sam show related that you're you're planning on organizing. Yes. So I am organizing a new uh, hybrid tournament. Um, <laughs> which is basically um it's gonna be i i always wanted to do this um with with communities that already have sam show tournaments like monthlies uh they have them at offlines uh, basically samurai showdown um has a couple of communities that are currently running them on xbox series consoles so I reached out to a few of the locals and to help get locals, you know, kind of up and, and going. I want to do like a hybrid tournament where we have them have a console that's online and they're going to, um, it's, it's not entirely, uh, like my words are all jumbled because I don't have it like all written down or anything, but I do know that. We have a couple of locals already lined up to do this, and I don't want to give too much away yet. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. yeah, so it's it's definitely you guys all know what a hybrid tournament is. It's it's an online offline. So one of the the local tournaments is going to be at their local tournament on an Xbox Series that's connected to the internet, and they're going to play people that are at their own home playing on the internet that that's a very good i think i think that's definitely one of those th I, I, one of those concepts that going forward uh it's definitely something the fgc might want to explore because you know like locals not everyone can make it out to locals right and then so if you have a system where people can be in a local situation um you know be with their peers and then at the same time be able to play those who choose to stay at home I think that's only good. It just makes the community bigger, right? Yes. Can you uh, discuss more about the advantages of Xbox Series on a local environment versus the other uh, types of platforms for the game? Because I know there's been a lot of discussion and a lot of community activity related to getting Sam Show hosted on Xbox Series at local the there is less input delay with the xbox series version it's running at 120 frames per second this version snk um, developed the game with the true 120 frames per second in it uh, that version was released in 2021 um, and when it's connected to a 120 hertz display you get uh, it's it's just a smoother uh, gameplay. You get a smoother gameplay, and you get instant uh, movements. Like you, when you do your move, your moves come out. 
and it's it's something that I actually heard last night when I was watching Sorrow's stream at Frosty. I heard someone in the background saying they didn't think that the series version was going to be that much that big of a difference, but they said it it's a noticeable difference and I heard a lot of people saying that. A lot of people came up to me saying that. Um, I and I agree with them. I I if I heard that there was a noticeable difference, I would be like, yeah, there's probably a difference, but you know, it's probably not that big of a difference. But when you play it, there is that big of a difference, in my opinion. And and I feel like a lot of people said that. Yeah, I feel like especially from people that are a little more experienced with the game, there's a lot of appreciation for the faster response time and how it affects your reactions and how the movement feels and things with punishing. It just feels more satisfying and accurate. Uh, it's kind of one of those things where like, I feel like people kind of raise an eyebrow with a big change like this, but then when they actually get their hands on it, they really feel for themselves the benefits, right? I just hope that as we move to support the platform at future events, at like a local level or a big tournament, I think it's definitely worth pursuing. I'm uh, just further testing and implementing the Xbox version. I think it's it's not just a little thing. Like, if it was just a little difference, I would argue that maybe the hardware investment and all the testing and stuff isn't worth it, but it's clearly a very big difference, and in my opinion, the best version of the game. So, I think it's really good that you and I and others are uh, leading the charge for Xbox Series as it were. I think, I think the main point of hesitation i guess for people into adopting the xbox series as as the uh, competitive platform is that you know, a lot of people have just have the game on you know steam and playstation and they feel like if they're not training on the xbox they're going to be they're going to have some sort of disadvantage going into the tournament right they just don't, don't have time to to get used to now uh, scrub as a as a as a competitor did you find that it is is there that much of a like we we say there's it's it's improvement right and I'm, I'm sure there is an improvement but like wh what kind of uh, influence does it have on someone who's never played on the X, X, Xbox and then suddenly finding themselves having to you know fly over to a tournament and then be suddenly placed in front in, in in this uh new platform like is it's it is such an improvement that it might be jarring or what what is your experience on that well i know that that's been brought up as a talking point on uh and if as from a few people like externally like from people like experiment and stuff but since i was at frosties and just talking to the people there that wasn't really a complaint. Like there was complaints with specific things. I will definitely try to fix, right? A further test, but not having a series to practice on, I think that doesn't really cancel out how good it feels to play on an Xbox here. Because there's been people, you know, like Royal Psycho and Baba and others, and they don't they don't have a series. But when they've tried the series, they've really enjoyed it. And I think, I just think the appreciation for how responsive it feels outweighs the notion that we should stay committed to outdated hardware just to appease the idea that not every single person has access. And in the case of Sam Show, the benefits natural benefits from the PC version being available, which also has very low input lag, or at least much faster input lag, the PS4. So if you want a lower input lag option, 
You know, a lot of people are getting on the beta, PC beta, right? So if you have that or input lag version, it's sort of similar to playing on an Xbox series. At that point, the only difference is the 120 FPS. And I'm just like... Right. So I, I just don't think it's that much of a concern or big enough of a concern to outweigh what people clearly like about it. And I mean, and Kelly, like just to just to play devil's advocate, because this VG on 20th is, is posted on the Xbox, right? Yeah. So I wouldn't it's a little like, okay, I'm, I'm playing the devil's advocate here. So isn't it just unfair for people who, are, you know, really want to join and, you know, and this this really big term and they just don't have access to it? Like, of course, Steam is, Steam is probably, everyone has a PC, so Steam is probably the the platform to do it on. But I get the fact that they, you know, Xbox being the, the better platform, um, it makes more sense to run on that. But, you know, what do you say to those who who saying, you know what, I, I can't afford an Xbox and... And you know, the, moving forward, all the X, all the Sam Show um, events are are going to be hosted on one. I just feel like they're being left out. Well, I mean, first of all, I Vortex Gallery um, is not opposed to anybody who wants to run a tournament on other platforms. Um, we we basically are trying to spread awareness of our, I guess they call niche fighting games. And that is the real point uh, or point um, mission, I guess, for Vortex Gallery. And my mission is to spread awareness of the fighting game developed with 120 frames per second gameplay. And a lot of people might not be aware, but Samurai Showdown is actually the first fighting game on a console to be developed with the 120 frames per second. And this game came out two years ago. It was released two years ago. And fighting games that are currently being made are, they're finally being released with 120 frames per second. And PlayStation 4 is not gonna be able to keep up with that at some point. So there's supposed to be a movement at some point. And I think that the fact that this game came out two years ago, and uh, I think the time is now. I mean, a lot of people are moving towards PCs for this uh, low input delay. And I just think that, I just want to spread the awareness of this uh, this particular game because I love this game and I felt it was special. and when it came out with 120 frames per second on a console that runs it super smooth i just really i put my money on it. i i wanted to i wanted to spread awareness of it that's why i wanted it um i really wanted other people to experience it and i thought the the best place uh could possibly be frosty and i thought that that was a good idea for people to at least try and mm -hmm. see what it's all about mm -hmm. As far as the argument about inaccessibility of the Xbox platform goes for online tournaments, I don't think it's much an argument about Xbox shutting out other platforms as much as it is about the idea that I don't really think a PS4 tournament would even happen otherwise, right? right? Like if it wasn't for right. Xbox, Snapchat sure just wouldn't be on VG. 2023 mm -hmm. because like regardless of our influence what we want the community has decided they don't really want to play on ps4 in its current form it hasn't really been almost any ps4 tournament uh in two or so years yeah i mean um even my and my locals dropped this this uh we, we used to still do when the when covid first started um my locals at toronto top tiers continued their weekly sam show tournament i think in the early months of 2020 but eventually you know people just started dropping off you think i know what this playing this game on the ps4 running tournaments on the, on the ps4 
it's just not worth the, the hassle. So they decided to shelf Sam Show uh, in light of uh, PC games. So they actually got replaced by them fighting herds on the PC. And but I've been speaking to the TO uh, Russell, uh, and uh, he's pretty excited that that uh, Sam Show is getting rollback. And I think they're also considering bringing that back once rollback is fully implemented. So you know once. Once rollback comes along, maybe we'll see Sam Show on on various other platforms. But in the but you guys are absolutely correct. In the current in current current times, I think uh, Xbox is the only viable solution to running a, a large tournament on. I'm not I sure. Think oh, personally, sorry. I think personally, it kind of speaks for itself when in 2023 specifically. Sorry, 2022 specifically, we've had we've had so many specific people and like former RSEC and PS4 top players. They've all made the jump of their own volition. It's kind of like we we didn't make these people play, right? They they want to play. People like bad intent, healing vision, and loot stairs, and myself and Maki. They they didn't have xboxes before but they, they found out and then they got on board right and kind of built off of that so it's kind of like a like a flies to honey kind of thing just people people like it so it just draws people in and not so much making people play on one platform kind of makes yeah also when we went to evo that was kind of also one of our things is that uh for the bring your own console area we set up a PlayStation and we set up a Xbox series so that people could actually feel the difference between the gameplay because that was that like I said uh, earlier m my husband and I that's our thing is that we want people to understand that there is a difference and and it feels a lot better and we wanted to, to inter I actually really wanted to interview people um, we didn't really get to that because everybody was so excited to play that there was a kind of a waiting list of of players that were kind of waiting to play so um it 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 was exciting because i was talking to people and and everybody really loved it and that's the thing is that um that's kind of been our our what we've been trying to do for a long time um uh before we ever met scrub cybot um and uh and it's picking up and I'm, I'm very happy about it. And I, I also, one of the things that you guys were asking about um, how people felt with the difference at Frosty, um, one person that we uh, met there, his name was Robin Legacy. He said, this was my first time playing this version and it was wild. I was whiff punishing Stan Bs with Stan Cs and WFTs. I pray this version comes to PS5 and PC. So that kind of gives you a feel for what the difference really is. It's it's basically when you want to do something, you do it. it. It comes out. And that's that's pretty much what you want in a fighting game. Yeah, game, I, really. I feel I feel like, you know, it's everyone's best interest to want to play on a better People should want to pursue something that's really good for themselves. I don't really, I don't think it's acceptable or compelling to say that, you know, it'll be hard or it'll be expensive, so it's not worth doing, right? It's just, it, it, it feels very defeatist, right? But what we're hoping kind of is that at a local level, like the tournament I hosted this past Saturday in Edmonton, things like Frosty Fausting, Evo. We're hoping that like seeing is believing and people can kind of see. And then from there, people will come to grips with how good it is and we'll kind of hop on the gravy train and we'll get the Xbox ball rolling. But it's, it's also seeing and responding to what people want. But I think both of us. You and I, Kelly, we kind of see that Xbox, the value speaks for itself. Yeah.
How many, uh, do, do you know what's the, there's only two more days left to sign up for VG23 for this game, right? Well, I think I still the registration, the registration closes on Wednesday at 12.01 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I've been telling everybody that tomorrow is the last day because if somebody thinks they're going to wake up in the morning on Wednesday and they try to register, they won't be able to unless they wake up at 12 a.m. and they have one minute and they can oh. register that quickly. <laughs> um, so tomorrow is really the last day to register. Um, but I also am having a uh, contest at that tournament that people have a little bit more time to submit to for that. Mm. You want to tell us yeah, more about that? The SSM contest. contest, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we did a best... Uh, I did my first best, best SSM contest for my Donkey Soda tournament last year, and it was it was a lot of fun, actually. Um, it It's basically people submit their SSM, and uh, we have a, a panel of judges that look through the SSMs, and they judge and they pick the 10 best and then we air the 10 in a VOD during the middle of the tournament where the chat can vote for the best SSM and uh, it was fun I, I enjoyed it and I think that just having the video playing was also just really cool because you get to see really cool SSMs and it's also cool to be one of the people who got nominated for one of the 10 because they're like hey that's my SSM <laughs> So it's it's a fun thing, and I hope it gets, I hope it becomes more popular because I actually think it also helps people to want to play the game and get an SSM. Yeah, I mean SSM is one of the one of the bigger highlights of this game. Uh, being able to land that really really heavy seventy percent off your opponent, and you know it's not something you can just throw out, right? There's a decent amount of risk to it. So when people submit these uh, these videos, that's what the uh, the judges look for. They look for a style, how much risk you took. Did it did it get get did you get a comeback from it, right? Um, was it off a D flag? Was it off a whip punch? All of those factors make a very exciting uh, finisher in most cases, right? Land, landing that one finisher uh, to to pull ahead. In, in in a match right uh, and then i i participated in the in the last one and tell you it's it you, you know when you hear about these tournaments you actually just want to go online and grind and just try to use to do as much as as possible to get that perfect clip to submit so everyone can see yeah can you tell us a little more about the rules like does it have to be on a specific platform can you submit more than one or whatever else so it can be on any platform and it can be since the game was first released in 2019 um, as long as it's this version like Samurai Showdown uh, what do they call it 7 or 2019 um, it's not for the older version like the uh, Samurai Showdown 4 or anything it's, it's only for this version Samurai Showdown and um, but yeah any platform um, it just has to be a clip where you're clearly playing a real person um i don't want anybody just doing it on a pc obviously because mm -hmm. that's not fun um i just want um as long as the names are clearly displayed there's like two players online whether it be like in a tournament where they have the uh, scoreboard names or if it's um on the actual clip because you're playing online in a lobby that's fine but yeah any platform since 2019 um, and it's a very easy form. It's not daunting or anything. Really, all it is is you click the the link and you just really put your name in there and then you just kick your copy and paste for wherever your clip is. You just clip, uh, paste the link. That's it. And going on to talk about the production value, because this is definitely one of those things that uh, you you and Thirsty came up with to add extra production value to the stream. Can you tell us more about how you guys run the Sancho stream? Because I know that uh, for those who are familiar with uh, Thirsty's all, his the production value on his channel uh, for Sancho is phenomenal. And uh, Kendall, would you would you like to talk about what? What makes uh makes your your setup uh special? I think what makes the setup special is my husband. 
<laughs> he's an actor. He likes to entertain. Um, he also used to be a network tech, and he build used to build computers, so gaming computers. So he's understands all that. Um, he has a gaming computer. He has um, accumulated a lot of stream equipment over the years. Um, like I said, the first game um, that he really focused on streaming was Samurai Showdown when it came out. He used to stream actually King of Fighters 14, um, but during that time, that was before Samurai Showdown came out, I was actually in college and I was, I did not pay attention. So I don't even remember really him streaming at all. I wasn't in his streams as much as I am now. Um, but over the time, he's accumulated a lot of tech. And he puts a lot of time into those streams. I will tell you, he sometimes puts, like, uh, he he really wants them to be perfect. He wanted replays. He, he looked up how to do replays. He wanted to do... Um, sounds some certain sounds he wanted to, anything he wanted to do he researched and he would figure it out and i think one of the things that really kind of pushed the bar was when we did the vortex gallery at evo and um we had a lot more viewers um and it it was very cool um but not only that, uh, just being with the Vortex Gallery has also helped because they also are professional streamers and uh, any questions he had, he had answers to. So um, shout outs to the Vortex Gallery and Shib and uh, Brett and anybody who uh, helped him out with that because I do know he had a conversation with, I think, Brett at one point and... Um, uh, they talked a lot about that stuff. I don't actually stream as, as like, when I stream, I just stream from the Xbox usually. So he's the, he's the brains behind all that uh, production. He's the producer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I remember tuning in the first time I tuned in to, to Thrusty stream. And I was blown away at the, the the level of detail and and the things he had added, like having an instant replay for those really really sick moments. It it, it felt like watching something on ESPN, like it yeah. like watching hockey or something where they you know they make the the, the goal right and they an instant replay get to see things happen again. Because we might not you know in, we got caught up in the heat of the moment we might not fully process what just happened right we just oh wow something happened. They, they, one person yeah. lost right and then there's thrusty instant replay ah they whiff the throw and then they got ssm right and he does it every single time and that that was i thought that was it's very extra but it's very entertaining right it definitely brings a whole level of of uh, entertainment to the to the uh, the stream and not no not just from sam show but just the, the 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 experience of watching sam show yeah also um one thing I forgot to mention is that he used to hold, when he used to hold um, his, well, he still holds the Casual Fight Friday lobbies, but back when we were on the Xbox One and a little bit more into the series uh, from the initial start of it, he was, he was doing uh, highlights reels of all the SSMs. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, um, so actually, if you look at his YouTube channel, he's just got he has monthly highlights from every month uh, wow. since, I think, 2019 up wow. there. So he has a lot of SSMs. I actually, want, at one point, posted the link to all the uh, highlights clips he's did. Because if you don't have an SSM, you're guaranteed to find one in there. He yeah. He them all and put them together. And also, um, if you like his production and his past tournaments, you will be pleasantly surprised with this upcoming Saturday Vortex Gallery tournament because I have seen some things and it looks amazing. It's going to keep pushing the level higher and higher with the production. So that's yeah, exciting to hear. Your ESPN word was the e exact word that I used yesterday. I said this looks like a foot like the Super Bowl. Like it was cool. 
So. so you're saying it'll look better than Capcom? <laughs> I saw you type something in that Capcom Cup uh, stream last night. I had just turned it on briefly, and that was all I saw of it. And it was just a man standing on a stage presenting a check, or maybe not the presenting of the check, but all I saw was a $2 million prize. Oh, yeah. I didn't see any of the gameplay, so I missed, <laughs> I missed that stream. That's Actually, the important part. That's the important part. The $2 million prize pool, that's the, <laughs> that's the important right, part. You got, right. Everyone's got, waking everybody up from their retirement. Yeah. Everybody wants them. Now, if only they hosted a uh, Sam Show tournament. Uh, with I'm, that sure, I'm sure that'll be us one day. You know, oh, a cap this is SNK. Let's go. EBS3? Let's do happen. it. I don't know. Let's do it. Four million dollar prize. Sure. <laughs> you know, with these, uh, especially now that we're talking about online tournaments, one of the things that I feel like really Sam should really missed out on was we did get a little bit of it, but we want international presence, right? We really want to get people from other regions coming in and, and play. And um, we did get a bit of that when Sam Show was a uh, main main game in Evo 2019. But after that, I think regions just kind of stayed stayed to, uh, to in their respective regions, right? And you know, moving on with Sam Show getting rollback, I really hope that we can get some of these international competitors in and, and really figure out which region is the strongest. We, um, there is a tournament, um, versus, uh, net versus, I think, or yeah, VS net versus yes. net gamers, I think. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, and they host their tournaments every single week. Um, after the tournaments end, uh, there's a player named caddy on who, and show actually, they both, um, start up their Xbox series and they start up a lobby and when we were on the East Coast, we were actually, we actually kind of could have played with them, but we were on my parents' internet, so it didn't really work very well. But being in California, um, the time difference is a little off for us because when we wake up, they usually end. But a couple of times, uh, I think last weekend or the weekend before, Zal has entered their lobbies. Oh, so really? He does, yeah, he plays with Japan. I've he seen um, him actually. Via Lu, yeah. Via Lu entered one of their tournaments, I've seen at least once. Yeah, um, I thought once too. Yeah, but I was thinking I was thinking like, you know, if if this rollback really is really get when it gets implemented and it's really good, I I really hope that uh you know re cross regional competition could be more of a thing. Um like maybe Japan's a little like Asia's a little far, but at least to Europe, right? I think I think having being able to compete with the, I would love to see Europe versus NA in in a uh, kind of like a uh, or four or what you want to call it like a team battle kind of deal. Versus, actually, I had that set up for the rollback beta, but the rollback beta came out late, and my team in Europe couldn't do it because of they were going on holiday that week. But and yeah, then we the beta was also wasn't in the, quite in the state to be playing a correct. tournament on. Yeah. Very good point, yes. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we were definitely, I remember um, just a few uh, a few days ago, I believe, um, there was a discussion. There was, a, it wasn't, it wasn't really, I don't think it was too serious, but in the main, main Savage Discord, who is the best Hibiki? And then Hibiki. obviously Sorrel, Sorrel has, has to step up, right? And then there was, uh, Sulian Lamu from France, who claims he's the best, and they ran a first to ten, and that was really exciting. But you know, it's it's on a delayed netcode, it's on PS4 netcode. But you met, imagine if that was on rollback, and we can really, really get to see which region has the strongest character specialists or just you know strongest players in general. Yeah, actually, um, my connection with France, uh, UK, and Sweden are. I don't want to say better than my connections with North America, but my connections are very, very good with with uh, those regions. Mm -hmm. So 
and I almost want to say they're better just because, I mean, sometimes, sometimes, you know, somebody will forget to put in their uh, network cable or something. But um, in general, my connections with Europe, France, Spain, Spain and Sweden have all been the same as as if I were fighting my husband in the next room on our wow. networks. It might be infrastructure thing, I think. Um, it depends on where where uh, each player is located. Uh, I know that I can definitely play with um, up to. I think my the furthest I can I can agree be agreeable with is Poland. That's as far uh, east mm -hmm. from where I am that I'm willing to play. Anything further than that is is too much. But um, yeah, surprisingly, I can I can get decent connections with um, Europe just just as well. Uh, Japan is sometimes okay. Uh, I can sometimes play Japan okay, but for whatever reason, Hong Kong is no is a no go. <laughs> Oh, really? uh, Hong Kong just becomes way too like it, it's it's not feasible. Uh, Korea is also kind of okay. Japan is is okay sometimes, depending on who I play. Um, and generally, North America is fine for me. But you know, just I can't wait for rollback. When 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 that gets implemented, you can just play ev everybody. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the things that I noticed with the rollback beta is. There are certain players that um, I do have trouble uh, connecting with, um, and it doesn't have to do with their their region. It's just simply that player I have mm -hmm, a trouble mm -hmm. connecting with. So I have that right. with, with one player specifically in Brazil, and I have that with one player specifically in Japan. And I'm not going to say their names because that's not mm -hmm. necessary, but um, the rollback beta, I saw one of them playing and streaming and i can tell that their connection just isn't isn't as as good as uh most connections so right a lot of i mean i don't know if that's if rollback is gonna you know i'm hoping that will help them um mm -hmm. and uh and that will fix all that because i think that's what it's intended to do right 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 but yeah, I don't think I I personally don't think it's entirely region based. I think it's a lot to do with the player's actual internet that you're fighting. I mean, I that's how I feel. No, I I, I definitely I definitely uh, believe that um, because there's there's anecdotal evidence that you know you could have perfect connection with somebody out of state, but you couldn't play the person down the street. Right, like that's definitely one of those experiences. That's that's really weird. And again, this is another another one of those anecdotal evidence. But like, I have heard that it had to do with the way that the uh, connections are being routed. Like, if you're playing somebody down the street, it's not like you're connecting directly to them. It's more like the connection is going out of state to several states and then coming back into your state to connect to the guy down the street. So it takes a depending on. I guess different service providers it, it goes on this crazy route and that's that's what causes these issues so i i think it's very heavily dependent on uh the infrastructure and then you know who who you who you have internet with yeah a lot of it also has to do with nat type um on the xbox you can test your nat type and an open nat usually means you're going to have a good connection um, a moderate nat can sometimes be a little iffy and then um never there's usually not a good thing with a strict net mm -hmm. um but we we have we know some some tricks that can help um players that have like a strict net to get them onto an open net mm -hmm. so um we've been able to help some people in the past and then it fixes everything yeah sometimes just just do one little thing right just one little thing and then suddenly you you can play. Yeah. Yeah. I I I have faith in SNK. If anybody's listening that is um praying for rollback and uh waiting for rollback and tried out the beta, don't become discouraged. SNK put out this amazing version on the series and it 
can only get better with uh, it, including um, code mystics. So have faith and stay uh, positive is my, that's I think I. so. Yeah. And that's, that's also one of the things uh, that was slightly bothering me about the uh, the beta because everybody thought that beta was going to be like this 99% complete project and just didn't you iron out the last few bugs and stuff and people were you know they thought it was going to be super polished but you know at the end of the day it, it's a beta right and I was concerned that this beta being the rough state it was was going to give people the bad image of Sam show and I had to actually had to correct a few people say hey this is not what the main game looks like. Like in the main game, we don't have any of these, these, you suddenly you're dead uh, bugs. We don't have any of these, you know, weapons disappearing, right? This is all beta. Let's keep in mind, this is beta. And this game, you know, it, even without the bait, without the rollback, depending on who you're playing against, it's still very, still playable. And I was encouraging people just, you know, it's it's $12, right? Like get get this game. It's really good game for, for, for just, for, for, for like with such a big sale you know like yeah. if you're interested get the game just try it out right it's like and know I, there's a few, few people in the discord saying oh the rollback the rollback ended i don't know if i want to play this game anymore i was like hey just just turn on the delay right and just try it out you know there's no there's no there's no downside in trying it out and if you like this game just keep playing it right and the rollback will come it will eventually come and it's like it's only going to get better, and even within the beta time, it did eventually get better, right? I think people yeah. are kind of conditioned, I think new players are kind of conditioned to kind of be served things like instant gratification, but the actual players are used to kind of putting up with bullshit per se, so I think we're more patient as long as it comes eventually. Yeah, I, I just hope. I, I'm sure because uh, since uh, Cold Mystics already ahead of time to to calm everybody, saying that there is definitely going to be a beta two. Um, I think people, you know, at, at the very least, they know there's not going to be another beta, so they're not giving up just yet. Um, so I, I, I am because you know we we definitely saw that that huge surge in player base just for the beta right and it's like and even now actually we're, we're seeing some residuals uh this on the steam version this game had an average of like what 10 players at any given day right and now you know after the beta let me just let me check real quick i think we're, we're, we have something like a hundred players um let, let me just quickly check steam charts yeah yeah average right right uh we have roughly uh 83 players that's eight times more than what we had in last last month right so people are are you know they they've because i think largely due to the sale right and the fact that there's a promise rollback that's coming up um people are willing to give this game more of a chance okay so uh, before we kind of sign off for today, Kelly, is there anything else you wanted to let us know about VG on 23 this weekend? Um, well, I guess I can close out, um, by reminding people that you do still have, uh, some time to sign up and it's, uh, vortexgallery.mo, M-O-E, and, um, it's Samurai Showdown 7, and it is on the Xbox series. It's this Saturday, which is February 25th, and it's going to start at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, the stream the stream is on Twitch, and it will be my husband's stream, which is Thrusty Zoll. Um, and that's when the best SSMs will be shown. So if you want to watch it, you can vote for the best SSM. So you'll see the 10 uh, finalists in a video. And once you see those 10 finalists, then you are going to type in chat like exclamation bet. And then you'll type in whichever number you want to vote for. Um, and then type uh, zero, space zero, 
that way you don't have to use any of your channel points to vote. But um, yeah, so you'll get to vote for the best SSM. It's this Saturday. It's through Vortex Gallery. Um, and uh, it's exciting. It's going to be a good production. I tell you that. Definitely going to be a good production. Yeah, definitely the biggest online event in quite a while. We'll have all the relevant links, the sign-up links, and the deadlines and stuff in the video description. So if anybody watching is interesting in that, interested in that, uh, just feel free to give that a look through. And just to end things off, thank you very much, Kellyanne, for all you do for the community, for spending some time with us today. Uh, really got some good content from this. Really appreciate your time. And we wish the best of luck for you in the future. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I uh, This was good. I liked it. And uh, I hope uh, more people will play Sam Show. We hope so, too. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thanks. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. We're going to sign off for tonight. Uh, you can follow me at Scrub Cybot on Twitter. For more updates related to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe to the video. Uh, for more updates for podcast releases and other content in the future. Thanks very much yeah. for joining us. Thank you. Until Bye. next time, have a great night. Thanks, everybody.